One of the things that's always intimidated a lot of Nebula users is the interface. And if you're like me, sometimes you do make your decisions on processors and on plugins or software based on the look. I know you shouldn't do that, but sometimes it's hard not to. And if you're going to be working with a program every single day, you don't want it to be something that you absolutely hate to look at or that really just turns you off of being in the DAW and making music. You know, fundamentally, this is still about having fun and doing something that we enjoy and expressing ourselves. And if we have to look at something that really turns us off, then, you know, it's probably not something that we want to be using. That being said, once you understand Nebula, its purpose, what it sounds like, where it can be used, and you're a little bit more open and able to listen very critically, you know, there may not be anything that sounds better in a certain context. But what Nebula has done, or what Acoustica Audio has done, is taken the Nebula technology, and they haven't advanced it, but what they've done is allowed you to take um, single programs and bundle them into specific user interfaces that are a lot more familiar and comfortable for most of us, myself included. So we're going to look at two examples here. One is this Red EQ, and the other is from a third-party developer from Prime Studio called Charlie. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to use these as master bus processors, mainly because they really work well as master bus processors. Here with the Red EQ, we have a three band EQ, we have a high shelf, so this isn't parametric, it's not a bell, it's a high shelf at 8K, a low shelf at 80 hertz, and then a middle bell, which is at 1.8. You can't adjust these, and this is really then telling me dead giveaway, you're gonna probably put this on a full frequency type sound, which makes sense for on the master bus or on you know a drum bus or a synth group or whatever. This is one of the EQs that sounds really good on everything, and so you need to be careful about how much you use it because I would still throw this into specialty EQ application. It's not going to be able to fix any problems for you. It's not really going to work as a blended EQ. You could maybe try, but you're very limited in what you can do. So really it is an enhance it. EQ and I think it works great on full frequency material. The other Aqua plugin that we're going to look at here is called Charlie. There's two versions that you'll download, Charlie and then Charlie ZL. The ZL stands for zero latency, only not really. I'm not going to worry about the zero latency version. I'm fine with the latency this adds in. And this is supposed to be a summing amplifier. Okay, and you might think to yourself, well, that's kind of silly. Why would you want to use something like this? Well, if you think about it, and um, even in many modern studios, what you have is a summing amplifier to take all of your signals and bring them together through one dedicated summing amp. It's a very subtle, slight, cohesive effect, but it can go a really long way. Just search for the dangerous bus, and you'll see how many people just swear by that thing. And of all of the gear that they have in their studio, that might be the one thing they do not want to give up. And so this supposedly emulates some kind of summing amplifier. I don't think it's that particular one, but the effect should be the same. So when you have a bunch of unrelated signals and you're going into the master channel on your DAW, this doesn't add anything. It's just, you know, numbers. It just is all processing out through the master. There's no additional coloration that's added. That's what the summing amp can supposedly do for you. So what we're going to do here with Paul's track is I want to first start by looking at the level meter to see where we're at because the same gain staging rules are going to apply. And this is also dictating where I'm putting these things in the chain. Obviously, as we go further here with the Nova, with the compressor here, the Kotelnikov, and finally with the Loudmax, we're always kind of focused on and going to pay attention to bringing the volume level up, the overall level up. That's really what this Loudmax is here for. And in some ways, the Kotelnikov is adding to the loudness as well. So what I like to imagine, and you can experiment however you want and put this signal flow however you want. What I imagine is though, we're going into the master bus. So I want my summing amplifier to be at the beginning. And then I'm imagining that all of these other things are like outboard gear. Okay, it also works better because I don't have to do too many extreme moves with my gain staging. So if I play this back and we look at the level meter, remember this is at the beginning. I'll put one at the end so you can see the huge difference. But right now we're actually pretty good.
Like I'm totally fine going into the summing amplifier that hot. It could even be pu pushing in here a little bit hotter and would probably sound pretty good. Remember, this is very much like hardware when you're bringing this in. So the harder you overdrive it, the more saturation you're potentially imparting. So if you want more, you can push into it harder. If you want less, obviously you don't want to run into it. You can even run into it a little bit below zero if you wanted to. Um, so let's take a look at the meter on the other side as well after all of our processing. And you'll see how this is just slammed up against the red the whole time. And that's really the reason why I wouldn't want to put the summing amplifier at the very end of this chain. I'm imagining this is like my console. And so the very first thing that happens when I go to the master is it goes through that summing amplifier. And then we do all of our additional processing like with outboard geared. So externally away from that console. All right, cool. So now that we've got some of that theory out of the way, let's just go and apply these things. And again, very subtle. I'm going to kick it off with the summing amplifier and hopefully i didn't leave any of those on no we're good i'll grab the charlie bring it in before the nova and these meters really are not going to do anything for you so you can just ignore them <laughs> So it's very subtle, but this is one of the effects that I now basically use on every track if I'm actually working on it from start to finish and applying master bus processing. Having something like this, it's very subtle, but when you actually do like A, B, and if we were to bounce all of this, we would hear the difference and we'd hear what it's bringing to the table. I'm not gonna worry about output gain for right now. And what I wanna do next is add in our EQ. So let's look at the curve we set with the Nova previously. <laughs> So we have the classic smiley face, a little boost here, a little boost here. This could be imagined like a low shelf. This could be like a high shelf, okay? Even though this is a bell because it's running into that high pass filter, it takes on more of the shape of a shelf. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this off and I'm going to turn this off and we're going to leave this middle band. <laughs> We're going to leave the high pass filter, but we're going to add in a similar EQ curve using the red EQ. So I'm just going to bring this in after the Charlie. And again, we can check our level meter here to see if we need to maybe add something in. Nope, we're good. And now I'm just going to use this red EQ and I'm going to apply a little boost here. So this low number here, 80 Hertz, this is a shelf high 8k this is a shelf and then we have our mid band and in this example i'm going to leave the mid band alone so let's start with the low go to extreme and then go to the high much low if we want to go really crazy with this we could make this sparkle Probably not necessary. So again, subtle, but makes a huge difference, I think. This is just a uh, amazing sounding EQ. It's hard to argue with that one. It's hard to be um, <laughs> subjective with that particular processor. So I'll leave the Nova as it is. I just want to be careful that I don't, I'm, I'm not driving too much gain from that red EQ that wasn't there before. So let's just take a look at the Katelnikov here. <laughs> Yeah, this still looks fine. And 
actually by going into, and I'm not sure if this is just me imagining it, but by going into this summing amplifier, it almost allows me to push the gain a little bit harder through the loud max there at the end. So we can do one final A, B here. And there you have it, working with the Aqua plugins here on the Master Bus, just to kind of smooth things out, add those little bit extra sparkle to the project. Very subtle, not something that's required, but again, this comes back to that idea of the 1%. Just in case there was any confusion, I wanna make it clear that it's not as if the Aqua plugins are only reserved for the Master Bus and Nebula is reserved only for regular tracks. You can apply the Red EQ you know, onto a specialty track if you want, or you could apply Nebula to this chain if you wanted to do that. So instead of using the Red EQ, for example, we could go in here and we could choose something like, say, um, you know, the Angels High Shelf Filter, okay, and use that. And we probably still would need the Red EQ for the Low Shelf, or we could just stick to what we had on the TD um, R Nova. But again, you can absolutely apply Nebula to the Master Bus if there's a preamp or something that you want to experiment with. By all means, do it. There's no rule saying that you can't. The one thing that you probably aren't going to do is apply the Charlie summing amplifier anywhere Excel except on the Master Bus or maybe in some cases on your groups. You could apply it to all of the different groups if you wanted to and then also on the Master. But as a summing amplifier, it's not really going to make any kind of big difference or really even be practical to put it on a track by track basis unless for some reason you really wanted to do that I'm not going to stop you but it probably just doesn't make sense and it's going to give you a huge CPU hit and um, latency problems that you probably don't really need so I uh, just wanted to make that clear in case there was any confusion thanks for sticking it out this whole time uh, Nebula can be very confusing and very frustrating but when it works oh my goodness it really does work so have some fun messing around with that but again if you see or feel that it's slowing down your workflow just don't use it right come back to it when maybe you need that extra bit of inspiration when you're tired of the tools you're working with but if you're in a flow if you've got a regular routine don't mess it up just because you think this is going to add that extra one percent that one percent goes a long way to some people but for the average listener probably isn't making the biggest difference in the world thanks again hope you got something out of this